Hello, this is Demon and yes, we're back with yet another Batman 66 episode review. Today, we'll be reviewing the episode The Foggiest Notion, the part 2 in this three-parter. So without any further ado, let's head straight for the review. We begin the episode with Batman, Robin, and Superintendent Watson's office, telling him their suspicions that Lord Fogg and Lady Penelope Pisu must be the culprits behind the recent robberies in which they are investigating. However, despite that, they... However, despite that, the one we're wondering how they got out of the situation or from the previous episode. Well, it was revealed that Batman used a device to get rid of the fog smoke that turned out to be kind of poisonous. However, <coughs> Watson does not believe Fogg's responsible because of his cast and also the fact he wanted Barbara to be a part of their faculty. Batman makes some excellent counterpoints, say it could be an act, and she suggests Barbara does not accept. And... Watson just can't accept that Fogg be responsible because of his aristocratic bloodline. And just as Robin's about to explain what Lady Prudence told him, Barbara comes in with a package, and it said it's for everyone, but the package suddenly begins to smoke. We then head to the, head to the credits, and we continue back to where we left them off. We look in the package and find out it's three silver bells. Batman asks Watson what this could possibly mean uh, to its significance, and he came up with an answer. There's a pub called the Three Bells. It was quite popular until the hippie movement um, took over and now, uh, now run the Three Bells. He then asks, could there be something possible for criminals to steal? Other than the usual docks, but however he remembers, there's, a, there's some garments, clothing that have been on there today. Thinking that this could be a possible, possibly the answer, and also possibly to challenge them to prevent a robbery. Batman and Robin then head their way there. We then head to, we then cut to back to Lord Fogg's manor where Fogg and his sister Lady Penelope Pisu are discussing to uh, plan to steal the, not only the garment, but to also eliminate Batman and Robin once and for all. Just as that happened, Barbara just happens to turn up and she notices that Lord Fogg is no longer wearing his cast and asks what happened, asks what he's doing. Uh, and ask how it happened. They said it just simply improved the change of weather. And it says he must go out on business, but he will be. But they have to go out on business. But they would like for her to stay here until then. As does that happen? We see Batman and Robin drive up in the Batmobile to the Three Bells, where where Batman enters, but tells Robin to stay outside because he's underage. Then Batman heads into the pub. Jesus, the budget for the pub is really atrocious. They clearly were trying to make it look like a British pub, but it's not even that spectacular or fancy because of the lack of the budget. We also see Fogg there, along with three of his henchmen having a, having essentially a, a, a beer, a pint. Batman comes up and says how his um, leg has cleared up, and says he's the most second observant person I've met today. And just as he's asking for if Batman would like to join for a drink, he says he doesn't drink anything, so he questions why he is he in this pub. And suddenly, Batman gets into a fight with Fogg's three henchmen. And it looks like he's going well until he's eventually subdued and tied up. Robin outside sees that Lady Penelope Peasoup and the girls from the finishing school for gentle women see he's about to go to the garment. So he quickly cuts the rope and as a result the boat ships away before they can get their hands on him. Well, hands on them. But he's quickly apprehended by Lady Penelope P. Soup and the girls because he will not fight an army of females and is taken away. It is then revealed that Barbara has managed to leave Fog Place and get in touch with Alfred to take a back, um, uh, to change into Batgirl and head to the, and head back into the mansion. It is also revealed that Batman has been, uh, is tied up and Lord Fogg uses a device to essentially wipe his memory, forgetting about everything, and essentially they leave. Batman then leaves, but Fogg minded runs into Alfred, who just happens to be there because Barbara, because of the whole bell thing that Barbara kind of told him. While he's there, there he takes Batman to the Batcave to get his memories back, and they do. And of course, they take back to the Batcave, his memories are back, but he's wondering where Robin is. And it's also revealed that Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, now dressed as Batgirl, was in Fog Place and was investigating a special place within the within the premises where all the priceless stuff that have been stolen are kept. However, she is quickly 
subdued by Prudence, who turns on the gas that essentially paralyzes her. We also find she's then placed in the dungeon, and Robin is about to have a similar fate until Lady Penelope Peasoup gets a call from Lord Fogg, telling that Batgirl's arrival, which she's surprised there is a Batgirl. And of course about Robin and the failed to get the garment. However, he said he has a much better idea of killing Robin than the dungeon, and essentially has him be transferred to him. We also go to Watson's office, where Watson, Gordon, and Chief O'Hara is there to pick up some notes and head back and head back to Gotham. We then get a call from Batman, then calls him up and tells him of Fogg's involvement and that the garment. And that the garments are, and that the you know price the stuff are missing, and uh, and they decide to quickly check the harbor. And realizing that Robin hasn't called Gordon, he is now getting worried. He then uses the back computer to essentially find where Robin is. But however, because they're in London, they're getting some weird words. Wench, wench. Alfred comes to the realization, winch, as in the winch room of a tower bridge, the bridge that opens up to let ships through. We then see Robin inside the witch room, which is another poor set, tied to the thing, and essentially will turn around and wrap Robin up in this rope, essentially suffocate him. Lord Fogg and his men go outside to watch the bridge go up so they can see him die. Don't know how that works. Batman and Batman and Alfred arrive just in time. Batman uses a device to prevent the bridge from going further up. Fogg is wondering what the hell has happened, and they quickly head back to Robin. When they get inside, they see they see Batman untying Robin, and Fogg, and Fogg realizing that his goose is almost up, orders his men, his three men and two extras, to fight him. During the fight, it seems to be going Batman's way, and it does. But then Fogg whips out his pipo fog, as he calls it, to cause the smoke. Where he and his henchmen make their escape. We end the episode with the room getting fogged up, but also a shot of Batgirl tied up in Fogg place in the dungeon, and say to tune in for the next episode. Again, Gordon and Chief O'Hara's role are very minor here, and Batgirl doing her own investigating work, I kind of find bl does differently with the story. Maybe it might distract some people, but I feel it's great. Alfred gets to spend more time on this, and I like how Robin is captured. Batman getting defogged uh, and essentially, you know, getting his mi memory erased is something unique, as no other villain has actually done that in the series before. They've given a mind control which has kind of caused memory loss in some way, but it's never been something done to this extent. Also, Fogg is a unique villain. What I said about previously, Lord Marmaduke Fogg still remains the same. I like the costume design, as it's clearly a reference to Sherlock Holmes. And I also like I view himself as a superior criminal. However, once again, motives for his crimes. Is he doing it because he's bored? Is he doing it because he likes the criminal lifestyle, or the family has no wealth and they need to use this to gain wealth? There's no real explanation. And that's kind of the thing I'm just always annoyed, um, kind of concerned about. Lady Penelope Peasoup is, again, another f is f fine, is a fine character. Not great or s outstanding, but in the same vein of Lady of uh, Lola Lasagna, a character to play off with the main villain for the episode. These two aristocrats, for me, work off really well with each other. I think it's mainly due to the uh, actors in question. Penelope Peace, oh, sorry, Prudence here, is yet another character that sort of has her own story mixed in. And it's kind of like she's trying to achieve her own ends and is playing off both sides. For what she really wants, we don't know, but we see a lot of a double dealing crossing nature in this episode when she pretty much traps Batgirl in that, you know, stance. It's pretty, f it's overall pretty fun. The foggiest notion for me is so far good. However, with the poor budget for the, fo the fog place where they first off the dungeon, the place where all the priceless are kept, the winch room and the bar kind of give, kind of annoy, uh, you know, it's something I really notice seeing as we go further on in the show. Other than that, other than those minor mix picks, it's an okay episode, and so far continues the story very well. It's definitely more action-packed than the uh, Penguin and Marsha th uh, three-parter when we get to the second episode. Overall, I'm really enjoying this so far. And there we have it, that was the Foggiest Notion. Join us next time when we reveal the final part in this three-parter. So tune in to the next Stephen Hour, the same Stephen channel, ladies and gentlemen, so long for now.